Let's make some vegan bacon. Okay, this is actually a really simple recipe. We're gonna start with one quarter cup of wheat starch. Now, I got this from Amazon and it's actually, like you could probably get it from an Asian market or something like that. You can also use the starch water left over from Wash the Flour Seitan. However, I don't have a recipe prepared for that one, so I'm using the whole starch. Plus, there's a reason later on that the actual starch works a little bit better. One quarter cup of water. You want to immediately start whisking that, otherwise it will stick to the bottom and makes like a cake that's difficult to uh, break up. This makes a small batch of bacon, by the way. You can always scale it up, but I recommend doing it in small batches because well, it's just a lot easier. One teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of liquid smoke. This happens to be mesquite flavor. Two tablespoons of soy sauce or tamari, whichever you like. And one teaspoon of maple syrup. Give that a good whisk. This will settle out as you're doing it too. So you wanna continually mix this up. You can make two batches and one of them has the white color instead of the full on color from the paprika. I don't particularly care about the color of it. Uh, bacon to me it needs a good flavor and a good texture. The actual colors are largely immaterial to me. So that's why I make it this way. Plus it's a whole lot simpler. So as I said, mix that up real good. Make sure there's no clumps, no lumps, nothing like that. Then we're going to get out a pie pan. Now this is a closed pie pan. Notice nothing's going to leak out the sides. Little bit of oil just for non-stickage purposes. I'm even gonna wipe that around with a paper towel just to get good coating everywhere. Just a little bit all over. This is where it depends on the size of your pan. I'm going to take some of our mixture and pour it into that pan. You want about an eighth inch of liquid you can go thicker if you really want to, but it kind of makes for a little bit of a weird bacon. Okay, this pan is gonna take all of this, so it makes one recipe, which is gonna be about eight to 10 pieces of bacon. Now, we take this and we move over to the stove. And over here, we have two things. One is a shallow pan filled with hot water, and the other is a bowl filled with ice water. You wanna make sure that your cake pan fits into that shallow pan, and a lid can still go on top. So I'm just gonna take that pan and put it right in. Try not to burn myself. Put the lid on, and we let that go for about four minutes. Now you'll notice it's listing to one side. We wanna kinda keep it kinda steady so it floats nice and even. I'll be honest, this method came from Sauce Dash. It seems absolutely phenomenal to make this style of bacon. Again, I'm just gonna keep tilting that a little bit here and there as the liquid moves around takes about four minutes of steaming to fully cook this up. If your dough was put in too thin, what'll happen is it'll crack and it won't actually come out of the pan nice and easy. So that's why I'd rather go a little thicker than a little thinner. And you know, nice thick cut bacon, right? Treat it kind of like a crepe. You wanna just make sure you have full coverage in that pan. Okay, I made an executive decision. This one was only about two minutes. And as you can see, it is well done. It's not cracking, it's perfect. So now I wanna drop it into the ice bath just briefly to chill it down so it stops cooking. And after a couple of minutes in the ice bath, we have a pan with a crepe-like thing inside. And now I just wanna go around the edges and make sure it's completely separated from the sides. It is very delicate, and if it's thin in any spot, it's even more so. So I just like to kind of break it from there and get around it a little sort of pick it up. It feels a little bit like a jelly. And there we go. Now the trick is get this out of the way. Lay it down. I like to put the cooked side down. That way it doesn't stick. Remember earlier when I mentioned that a little bit of that starch is probably going to be helpful later? Yeah, here's, here's where. Just a little sprinkle over the top like that. And I'm gonna work that in with my fingers just so that it doesn't really stick. Not crucial, does help though. Dries it up just a touch. Got that one from Sauce Dash too. Okay, so now we have our crepe. Now it's time to cut this into strips. When it comes to cutting it, you can cut it any way you want to. I'm just gonna kinda go, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch wide. It cuts really, really easy. Even a dull knife can do it. I just like to separate them as I'm doing it. And 
And then some of the bigger ones, I'll just kind of cut them in half. You can leave them big if you really want to. Something I did want to show you though is look at it. See, it's kind of like a jelly. It looks to be about an eighth of an inch thick. So that's kind of what you're going for. Some of them get a little bit thinner on the edge. Uh, well, they're actually fairly decently consistent all around. Yep, they're all about an eighth of an inch. I thought one side went a little bit thinner, but apparently not. Okay, over to the stove where we have my cast iron pan with some oil in it. It happens to be grapeseed oil, and I'm just getting that up to temperature. But also on the side here, I have a plate with some paper towel on it. That's the receiving area. We have a plate with our bacon strips on it, and I'm just going to start laying them in. Oil is about 300 degrees right now, so it is getting up to temperature. I have just enough oil in here to coat. You notice there's not a lot of fat in this so far. So this is about the only source of fat in these, really. And I mean, it's bacon. You really can't make bacon without fat. I'm looking to cook these for about three to four minutes per side. Um, some of them, the oil is not quite hot enough on them yet. So we wanna just move things around a little. I know someone will ask. So I did actually try doing this in the air fryer. They did not come out very nice. I will just say that right now. It was edible, but the fried version is incredibly better. Do you see how flexible that is still? That is not done. You wanna cook it until it's firm. It's uh, flexible, but not um, bendy. We're at about the two to maybe three minute mark right now, and they're just almost ready to flip. When you do flip, be very, very careful. They're still quite fragile, so I'm always a little cautious. See, it's still very flexible, but flip it over, and we got a little bit of color on the other side. That's what we're looking for. We want some color. And you don't want to do what I just did and break it. When they feel like they're not quite so flexible, that's when we want to move them out of the oil and onto the paper towel. Drain off some of that excess oil. And as they cool, they firm up even more. I'm just frying off the last couple. And as you can see though, they really do start to resemble bacon. And I just tasted one of the little pieces. I gotta tell you, it tastes like bacon. All right, and after just a few minutes, here we have our plate of bacon. And I'm just gonna grab a piece, this one. All curly, looks like bacon to me. Let's give it a try. Can you hear that crunch? If you're craving bacon, and you're on a vegan diet, this is the way to go. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bistro.